Hey guys, welcome back. In one of the previous videos, we saw how we can separate our configuration from a test and make our test environment agnostic. In this video, we are going to learn about how to manage our secrets. Why? Uh, there are many fields like user IDs, passwords, database user ID, service passwords that you would not like to expose in your project as a plain test. So in this video, we're going to see, you know, how you can use a tool called GitCrypt uh, to encrypt such sensitive information so that it's not available to anyone who, is, who gets access to your repository, right? Um, so I created a readme file for this. Let me open that one and let me open it in the right tab. Uh, let's close this. This contains detailed detail steps on, you know, uh, how you can encrypt your secrets. Uh, so to do this exercise, what I've done is in each of these configuration repositories for develop environment, local host environment, and staging environment, I have kept three different files like secrets.config. And at this moment, well, these are just dummy usernames, dummy passwords, uh, but you don't need your username passwords. This is just a demo. And I have mentioned things like admin login as develop admin, admin password as develop admin. Uh, same goes for uh, localhost and same goes for staging. And what you're going to do is we are going to uh, encrypt all our secret files uh, and we are going to see like if we publish our code to GitHub, nobody should be able to you know uh, see this information. So the way you can uh, the way you can do this is by using a tool called GitCrypt. And if you're not got it installed, uh, first you would need to install it. If uh, let's say if I if you just go to Google and search for GitCrypt, you'll get these two nice articles. Like one is from the uh, GitCrypt itself. This is the GitHub repository, which is what I've opened here. And they give detailed instructions about, you know, how you can work with GitCrypt. And another good article which I saw was uh, from Heroku. And if I open this, um, you see like a, a very detailed step-by-step -step information created by this gentleman named uh, Michael Bogan. So all credits to him uh, for, you know, uh, writing this out. So I think he has mentioned about uh, installing GitCrypt for uh, for Mac users using Homebrew. But let's say if you are a uh, Windows user, you can use Chocolaty and you can install GitCrypt, right? I have already got GitCrypt installed on my machine, so I'm going to skip this step. So if I go back, uh, once you have installed GitCrypt, uh, depending on you know which user you are, Windows or Mac or Linux, then you can change to the repository. I'm already in the repository. And then you just need to initialize your repository with this command called Get crypt in it. So let's just run this command, get crypt in it. And if I run this, it says generating a key. And now it has already generated a key. You, If you look here, you cannot see a key yet. Um, so what you have to do is you have to run this command called get crypt export key. Um, and then you have to give the name of the key. So I'm giving the name of the key as get crypt key as zero because it's the name of a project. So let's copy this and let's run this. And what it is going to do is it is going to export this key uh, into our uh, root repository, right? So let's run this. And if I come here now, you can see there's a key called get crypt key zero, which is exported here, right? Uh, let me remove the readme file. Uh, so now you have the key that you can share with other users or you can put it into a central password manager like one password uh, you know to, to decrypt your uh, secrets but so far we have only initialized our repository but you're not told get crypt on which files we want to uh, you know encrypt and which we don't want to encrypt so <clears throat> what get crypt tells us is is to create a file called uh, git attributes file so let's create a new file called dot git attributes. This is a file which Git understands and what we need to do is in this particular file which we have to specify which files we want to encrypt and which ones not. So if I open the git attributes file I'm going to paste this command. You might ask uh, how do I know about this command? So uh, as I mentioned if you go back to this uh, this article so let's say if you go to GitCrypt itself they mention here specify files to encrypt by you know creating a git attributes file so if you go through either this readme file from GitCrypt itself or you go through this detailed article they explain you step by step on you know the same things which i'm explaining in this video 
uh, in our case since we want to encrypt our secrets file that's the reason i'm explaining that you know i want my file to be secrets.config file but it need not have to be like a direct file name you can even give patterns here so i think if we uh, scroll down here uh, you can see that they have mentioned it's you can specify you know this wildcard parameters and you can actually let's say encrypt everything inside a directory at this moment i'm not going to encrypt everything inside the repository and the reason is like let's say if i encrypt everything inside resources folder uh, one thing is good that you know you can encrypt all your resource files uh, and the, the the pro is if there's any secret mentioned anywhere in these files it is protected but the cons is once you create a pull request and you know you push that code nobody will be able to see that information so i really like to decrypt encrypt only the uh, the secrets and, and, and nothing else so that's the reason i'm only going to mention secrets.config and nothing else so once you add this line into this create attributes uh, file the next step is to see which files will be encrypted and which not so what you can do is you can run this command called git crypt status so let's run this command and what it is saying is it's saying which files will be encrypted and which files will not be encrypted right so let's see it's running the whole thing let's wait for a few seconds cool so now as you can see um, it says only these three files will be encrypted which are inside the resource folder and nothing else will be encrypted at this moment if you click on any of these files you might see that you know you can see all the information and that is because the way git crypt works is um, uh, it's called um, let me see what is the term for it um, let's see let's scroll it down um, let's see um, yeah so it says Get crypt transparently encrypts and decrypts files as you push and pull them to your repository. So only when you're doing a commit, that's the time, you know, it's going to really, um, let's say, I'm wrong. So every time you do a checkout, uh, that's the time, you know, it, it encrypts, it decrypts your key. So like it, it does everything transparently. Uh, so let's say if we go back, uh, if we go back, now it specifies that these files will be uh, you know, uh, encrypted, everything else will, will not be encrypted. So let's just go back and see what's the next command. Uh, yeah, and if I open the VS Code now, so let's say if I open uh, VS Code, VS Code is showing me all these files as changed files, and you do not want to uh, like commit your git crypt key, right? Because if you also commit the key, anyone who has access to your repository can download the key and can decrypt it. So you actually want to um, ignore this key uh, from, from you know, version control. So what you need to do is, let's go back and let's add this file, git crypt key zero. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. And let's add it to the git ignore file. And what we're going to say is uh, ignore git crypt key. And let's put it here. Zoom in a little bit. And now if we go back to VS Code, you will see that that file is, you know, now gone. So let's add the git attributes file. Let's add, well, actually this is on the main branch. So let's wait for a minute. And in fact, let's create a new branch. So git branch, uh, git checkout branch. Um, let's call it as encrypt secrets, uh, git branch. And now if I go to VS Code, I can add, I've already added git attributes file. I can add git ignore. For now, forget about Docker file because I'm still working on it. Uh, this is the readme file, you know, which I've been using in, in this demo. Uh, so let's see this. Why is it complaining? Uh, blank around headers. That's correct. Uh, first time. Uh, 
encrypt your secrets. No dots. Um, encrypt your secrets. Okay, let's remove the empty space. Let's remove all these empty spaces. Um, no trailing spaces. Committing. Yeah, committing. Verifying. Of course. Uh, initialized. Quick fix. I think it's it's good that you know we also spend time on this guys because all these things are important right uh, when you're working on a project you will encounter all these problems and there's no point ignoring them um, so let's fix these problems um, fix this empty space remove this you should have an empty line as you can see around headers and now there are no more complaints and this is just a name so we can ignore it uh, so now this looks good no more errors right and now we can stage our file i think i added um i addressed a warning which was shown so i'm going to commit this as well and this is the place you know where we have got all our secrets file now we can add our secret files because we have already uh, done git Initialize it with git get crypt. So I'm going to add all these three files. Uh, add. And now we can say uh, add, add it. secrets and get crypt um, yeah, documentation. Right? Let's commit this. And if I go back let's open our readme file what does it say it says once you have done everything you can push your files to github right so let's push push our files to github and uh, get push control c control v uh, let's open the yep slack is already telling me that i pushed some code let's go to my project it's saying there was a recent push. Let's compare and create a pull request. Encrypt secrets. Let me create a pull request. And you can see these are all the files, you know, and that we, that we have pushed to the repository. The cool thing is you cannot see the secrets here, right? Like that is exactly what you want. So even if someone has got access to our repository, they cannot look at our secrets and it's okay if you don't you know so use your IDs and passwords and rest of the information is, is exactly what you want uh, in fact we can push something else as well uh, since we are on it let's go to readme file and uh, let's see readme docker um, show file github actions okay and to end test elimination process. I think I can add, add this information later to, to the readme file, right? So I think for now, for now, this is all we need uh, to, you know, encrypt our passwords. And then let's first merge this pull request. Uh, so let's, in an, in an ideal world, somebody else would review my PR and, you know, they would approve it and merge it. Uh, but for now, since I'm the only one who's working on it, let's update the branch. okay for some reason my ci build is failing um, i can also have a look at that um, in fact let's see what's going on but even if it even if it is failing i'm not going to you know fix it because that's a little bit outside the scope of this video but i'm just curious you know why it is failing uh, so let's see how, how it goes uh, okay so we have lots of errors um, which I'm going to analyze by the way after this video and I'm going to fix it um, but let's see no class definition found for user config 
ok? Cool, no worries. I'm going to fix this in, in, in my next video, right? Let's go back and not lose focus on the video in hand. So this is the PR in an ideal world. If everything would have gone green, uh, you can merge it. Um, so if I click on enable, uh, confirm auto merge. And if now I go and go back to my PR, the PR should be merged. Uh, let's see. All required citizen checks on this must run successfully. Okay, so in this particular case, it is asking me that I must fix this problem. Otherwise, it is not allowing me to march my code. And these are the requirements, you know, which I set up for myself. But at this moment, the video is already 15 minutes and I don't want to spend more time fixing this. So I would fix this after this, after this session. So what I'm going to do is quickly, I'm going to change the settings and I'm going to basically remove this check. Um, okay settings branches edit and i am going to remove this check for now right and save changes use get on mobile uh, it's a good thing that you know it does not allow you easily to make these changes uh, enter the number and now it's done all right so if i go back to my pull request the pull request is merged and if I go to code, and if I look into um, source, main, resources, and if I look into any of the secret files, the other data should be uh, should be visible. So, for example, test data should be visible as a clear clear text. But if I look into secrets, I cannot see it, which is exactly what you want, right? Um, yeah. So let's go back to our IntelliJ and let's see what else is remaining. So with this, you can see that, you know, our secrets are now encrypted. Now the question is, how do other users work with it? So the way other users can work with this is, uh, once the project is initialized, for every new user as a one-time activity, they have to, you know, ask for this, uh, for this key that we have downloaded in our project, uh, which is, which is this key, right? Get crypt key zero. So if you're working in a company where you are using a central password manager tool, something like one password or any tool, you can store this key there. And you know, those users can then download that key from the one password manager. Um, of course, they need to have access on one password manager, or if it's just like a small project where you're working with a small team of QAs, uh, you know, you can also like share this key with them. And the only thing that they need to do is copy this key in the root of this repository like we have done here and run this command git crypt unlock git crypt uh, key zero like this is the name of the key and this is the command git crypt, git crypt unlock and a good test is until they run this command if they try to look into secrets file the secrets file you know will not be visible but the moment they run this command the file would be visible uh, right um, so with this I think the next question would be, okay, what do we do if you want to like use our secrets in the CI? Because we have the key in our remote machine, but in CI, as you know, like every time we run our we run our code, it's going to be new node, like new machine, and you that new machine would not would not have this Git crypt key. And like the question is, how do we deal with it? And that's a topic in itself for the next video. So in the next video, I'm going to sh I'm going to show how you can decrypt files in a continuous integration environment so that you know you can uh, you can still work with these secrets uh, when you test running in ci cool so i hope you learned something useful in this video and i look forward to see you guys in another video thank you bye bye